NVIDIA just invented 4 to 20 times faster transformer architecture while keeping the same accuracy of the transformer. In this novel neural network architecture, they turned the whole GPT into a ball, or I should say hypersphere, which has many more dimensions than just three dimensions of the ball. All vectors forming the embeddings, MLP, attention matrices, and hidden states are unit norm normalized. So every single vector and matrix goes from zero to the surface of the ball. And there is one, or I should say, hypersphere. And when you have an input token, it gets its representation as a vector from the center to the surface of the sphere, hypersphere. And all of these transformation, attention, M MLP, and all the other residual, whatever, they just move this, rotate around this vector. And after it goes through the whole transformer and there is some rotation, then they find the closest vector of uh, closest token to this new rotated vector. And that's our token prediction. Here you can see that they normalize literally everything. So they remove this RMS normalization of the inputs. So this is input age. They just pass it directly through attention and then they normalize attention. And so attention vectors, attention matrices are just these vectors in a uh, hypersphere, all from zero to surface. And so they also add, so here in the normal transformer, they add residual connection. But in end transformer, they normalize that residual connection. And there are some extra mathematics parameters and stuff here. Well, they do the same for MLP. They normalize it and they remove this uh, RMS normalization. Residual connection again. And this is the output. And now every single matrix and vector here is from zero to the surface of the hypersphere. And as you are doing these uh, transformations, calculations, you are just rotating that vector. And so from the input token vector, you do rotations around and you find the finishing vector. And then the closest vector to that vector is going to be your predicted token. Or you could also get multiple closest vectors for like multiple different possibilities of next tokens. At first, I was not going to make this video because this maths is very hard for me and I'm still trying to figure all of this out. But then I thought, okay, well, maybe I can explain experiments, explain graphs, results, and maybe even some like high level concepts and mathematics a little bit. So that would be useful as well for you. So let's go. I think this mathematics is mainly from hypersphere, so equations and laws and research from hyperspheres. So here we can see the results of GPT versus NGPT. Let's look at red and pink line. Red line is the classic GPT with 200,000 iteration training. It achieves this accuracy. And the pink line, the NGPT, with only 20,000, so 10 times faster, achieves the same accuracy. Now, what is this black line? It says NGPT with 200,000 iterations. Now, I'm not really sure what this black line is because they didn't explain it uh, here in this part. So maybe somebody can help me out. But uh, what they say here is we have 10x speed up in between red line and pink line. And the, it's ab about uh, 400 billion tokens for 200,000 iterations. This is very interesting as well. Let me zoom in. So let's look at the left uh, one first. We have uh, 1K context length. So let's first compare uh, green and blue. So both of them have half a billion parameters, but this is green is GPT, this is NGPT. So you see that uh, green needs uh, around 430,000 uh, training tokens to get to the same uh, loss as NGPT with only 120,000 tokens. Then let's compare uh, red and black. So GPT and then GPT with both with 1 billion tokens. We can see that NGPT reaches lower loss a lot faster. Then we have 4K to uh, context window and 8K to context window. So they get 4 times, 10 times and 20 times faster, these three. But uh, this is in terms of tokens, uh, like training tokens in billions like the validation loss versus training tokens. 
but also uh, this uh, NGPT has a little bit of more like steps and calculations. So for example, if this is 10x faster in the training tokens versus validation loss, in reality it's maybe seven or times or eight times faster because there are like some extra steps. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can maybe check all of this out. And they also stay uh, while there is some increase per step so 80% increase for 4k and 60% increase for 8k context respectively first of all as you scale the context window the increase per step gets lower and lower and for uh, large networks it's even less significant or maybe even negligible and also there can be code optimizations that will improve this further here we have benchmarks so let's look at this one hella swag uh, we have uh, green versus blue so both are half billion uh, tokens so the green one is normal gpt this is the value of the benchmark uh, as we go through uh, tra training tokens and then blue it gets a lot higher but this scale on the side is from 0 0.35 to 0 0.6 it's not like zero to something so it's also like scaled up zoomed in and we can see that ngpt also outperforms classic gpt on a 1 billion parameter size and we can also see that a 1 billion of classic gpt is similar to half a billion in the uh, like ngpt and maybe if they kept training half a billion maybe it will get closer or maybe it will go below this one so i think what will probably happen is because this model classic gpt 1 billion is larger then it would uh, eventually outperform the half a billion one with uh, further training if you want to look at the other benchmarks and gpt consistently outperforms the classic gpt representation learning on the hypersphere is shown to be a lot more efficient way of learning and a lot more stable way of learning the main contribution of this paper is normalization of the embedding dimensions of all matrices ensuring they reside on the same hypersphere but that normalization alone would constrain the inputs of non-linear units and thus the scaling factor for these units should be introduced spherical representation of ngpt enables scientists to collect and analyze statistics about gpt's components in different and maybe even better ways most importantly it allows for the application of mathematical techniques specifically designed for dealing with hyperspheres we believe that the reported acceleration by a factor from 4 to 20 is only the first step towards uncovering new algorithms and architectures that could emerge from ngpt and the future work should explore scaling here we see parameters so for both uh, gpt and ngpt uh, 500 million models and 1 billion parameter model so we got number of layers here model dimensions number of heads and then we see a bit of a difference in these parameters as well so the time per step for ngpt is uh, a bit higher for lower context windows this is because uh, normalizations are not optimized and there is a bit more of them so for example here they normalize uh, q and query matrices and also for gpt's normalizations are fused with other steps and for ngpt it's not yet fused so in the future if it's fused it's gonna like be a lot faster optimization parameters so uh, ngpt has adam which is adam w with weight decay zero they don't need weight decay because uh, when they are casting it to a, a sphere hypersphere and normalizing it that immediately solves the same problem as weight decay is trying to solve also if you completely remove normalization of query and key this gets only a minor negative impact on the results then they measure perplexity now the red one is gpt and black is ngpt i'm not sure why uh, gpt gets such high perplexity are they even using rope so they are using rope as i'm guessing but i'm, I'm not sure why like this shouldn't the perplexity shouldn't be so high on gpt either but it looks like 
Uh, they're not using any special modifications, whatever. I'm not sure what they mean by that. And without using those, the perplexity stays uh, smaller than uh, GPTs. But I feel like this perplexity problem is already kind of solved uh, with ropes, so I'm not sure exactly. As I said, mathematics here is super tough. So they are using a lot of, I think, transformations and formulas for hyperspheres, which I'm not familiar with. But maybe in the future, if this go becomes mainstream or something, then we can slowly learn this as well. You can check my channel for more daily research papers. You can just leave my icon below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.